Hello, my name is Jennifer Bailey. Um, I teach at Ames Community College. I teach programming. Um, I was a developer for seven years previous to that job. And one thing, now in my work, I do a lot of career counseling. So one question I get all the time, should I pursue programming? Because students are aware that this is a big investment. They hear rumors of how hard it's gonna be, and they wanna know, am I gonna be good at this? Is this something I should pursue? They love the promise of the um, job and the career and the money and the prestige, but they don't know if it's something they should really invest in. So based on my field experience and based on my experience as a career counselor, here are just some observations that I've made. And one thing is I don't mean to stereotype. So what I've done first is like, we all know the stereotypes. This is a lot of what the students know when they come into programming. So maybe the whiz kid, this was from the 80s. This was me, you know, um, hacked on DOS and you know, this movie <laughs> and so forth. So that's one stereotype. Another stereotype, the disgruntled cubicle professional. He's usually um, got a lot of quips. He only does as much work as he has to do to not get fired <laughs> and so forth. Um, then you have the quintessential nerd. So everybody, you know, when um, I was in college, lots of my friends said, why do you want to major in comp sci? Everyone will think you're a nerd. <laughs> And then the recluse. So I always love Sandra Bullock at home in her pajamas. Um, you know, she orders pizza online, all her friends are on chat. So there's also the stay at home reclusive programmer. And nowadays, there's this rock star <laughs> game programmer. You know, so this movie, <laughs> Grandma's Boy, if you've never seen it, is really funny. So you have a lot of young people um, who haven't actually met a programmer and they don't know if this field is for them and they're filled with these ideas and these stereotypes, so how do they know if they should um, sign up for that major? Are they gonna fail and um, lose their tuition? Um, so one thing I do know, programming, um, it, it doesn't matter, it's not a function of age, it's not a function of nationality, um, it's not, a, you know, there's no real stereotype. I see programming in all different types of people. I'm lucky enough to work in a job with a lot of diversity. So I've met programmers of all shapes and sizes and all different ages. So you really can't tell based on a demographic or a stereotype who's going to be good. Um, and then, you know, how would you know? You don't want to invest a lot of money. You don't have a crystal ball. I hear this also from employers. How, how do we know who we should get training for? Should we get training for these employees? Um, how do we know which ones are going to be good at it or who we should hire? It's like finding Waldo for them, you know, who's, who's got the talent or the education. Um, so there are consulting companies and you can go online. This is just an example. You can take an aptitude test. I don't know that these really accurately gauge anybody's ability, but they certainly are kind of fun to take. They might give you an idea. I personally don't use one of these. I think they're kind of silly. <laughs> so some companies at some point pay companies to give these tests, but this is one you can take for free if you've never done any programming. You can take this test and see I didn't score as high on it as I thought I should, having been um, experienced in, programmer, uh, in programming for several years. So here's a few things that I've observed, um, just personality traits. This is what I observe in people to advise them that it's a field they should partake. Um, one, they're self-motivated. So they're gonna motivate themselves to study. You don't have to tell them to study. They're the students who are always doing the extra credit. Um, they're not always as worried about the deadlines. They're not always um, as compliant and following instructions, but they always are self-motivated. Um, so if you're the type of, if you're the type that I like to do things independently, I don't need someone to nag me or to drive me, that's one very positive attribute that you might be a programmer. Um, are you persistent? I know that I'm persistent to a fault. Another word for persistence is also stubborn. <laughs> I, so you can't tell me that things are impossible, not until I've experimented every avenue and failed. Then I'll maybe concede, but it's long after I've exhausted every possibility. So it takes this particular skill, even in college, it takes a very persistent personality. You have to keep trying at lo long hours after you want to give up. So um, you also must be very persistent. 
uh, creative. And this doesn't necessarily mean artistically creative, but creative avenues. I see a lot of musicians. I see a lot of um, automotive people building with your hands, um, engineering, um, knitting even. You know, a lot, uh, any creative, are you a creative person? Do you like to make things? I think that's what I think of when I think of creativity. Um, the nonconformist avenue. So I love this quote. It gives me great pleasure indeed to see the stubbornness of an incorrigible nonconformist warmly acclaimed. And this reminds me of one of my students who would get in trouble in math, but not in my class, because they see a better way. And they're not going to do the instructions if there's a better way. And a lot of times they're going to get confused when I break things down into multiple steps. I see my students getting confused by that because they see the shortcut immediately. And, um, but the nonconformist angle of this is they're not going to do something wrong, at least not without an explanation from you why they have to do it wrong. And so they, they don't always do what they're told. So they don't have trouble in my class, but they have trouble in some classes because they won't do what they're told if the teacher's wrong. <laughs> and I've observed that in young children, too. Um, effective communicator, and what, um, in many of the stereotypes, the programmers are seen as being the reclusive, not talkative, but really I think we're more brief, and we communicate effectively and using technology. So um, I think you have to be a very effective communicator. You have to be able to ask the right question at the right time. You have to be able to do it in a short sentence. So those, uh, um, that's kind of a conundrum. And there's another paradox, too. A lot of times, college entrance exams and things will say, are you good at math? If you're good at math, then you're probably going to be good at programming. Well, not everybody has a background in math, but that doesn't mean that they're not going to be good at programming. Yeah. Oh. Oh, oh thank you. <laughs> Sorry. So I look at more, are you a logical person? Are you a problem solver? I know that my mother is, and she has no formal education in math, but she would never shut the gate being on the wrong side of it. And so, you know, do you see, are you a problem solver? Do you have common sense for finding the shortest route to the solution to problems? And then memory, this is another sort of paradox. I see that a lot of times we ha we're very forgetful people, but at the same time we'll remember that piece of trivia from 20 years ago, like the actor in a certain movie. So this is just something I observe in my students that are good at programming. They remember little details very well. Sometimes they're also forgetful about things, where they left their shoes, where they left their keys. You know, putting the remote control in the fridge and that kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> or uh, sometimes I, I've walked into a wall because I'm so deep in thought or forgot which room I was going to and just kind of walked into an avenue. And then change. One last paradox. You know, I see that a lot of these personalities fear change, but at the same time, they're a catalyst to change. So they fear change up until the point that they need to make it, and then they spearhead it or they cause it. So um, it's kind of another paradox about personalities. So if you were or you know anyone who's thinking of learning, invest uh, learning programming, you have to realize that it's not a small investment. It's thousands of hours. Um, you can teach yourself or get a formal education. Either route, it's going to be thousands of hours and lots and lots of practice. So it's not a small goal. It's a two to ten year goal. And then I would say, Try it out. And when you're trying it, don't try to think, am I good at it? But think more of, am I passionate about this? Do I enjoy doing this? Is this something I want to sit and practice for um, all day, every day, 10 hours a week for the five years it's going to take to get um, going on it? So I would say the only way to know really is to try it out. And then see how you felt about it. Did I enjoy it? Not so much was I great at it, because I think everyone sort of feels, especially when you're learning, that I'm not the best at this. You know, people know so much more than me. But, um, and that's, that's all. <laughs> so thank you very much.